Back now, my colleague Melissa Griffin Kane interviewed the Bay Area's own Olivia Pope, legendary public relations guru, Sam Singer as well. Let's watch. Welcome back to Bay Sunday. We're here with Sam Singer. Thank you so much for being here. Sure. Now, Sam, before we get started about your career and your thoughts on things, why don't you, for, for viewers at home, explain what it is that you do? We have a public relations agency that helps people and corporations tell our stories to the public, to the press, to elected leaders. So we work for a lot of people who have interesting issues, Chevron, the city of San Bruno, uh, and other companies. I like to think of you as our, our very own Olivia Pope. You're the, you're the person to call when, when, there's a, when there's a big disaster, right? When things are really difficult, we have a very good expertise at helping people tell their stories in difficult situations. We know how the news media works. We know how politics works. Almost all of us were former reporters or former uh, aides to elected officials. Now, is that how you got started? I started as a copy boy, worked my way up to being a newspaper reporter. Uh, in those days, everybody wanted to be Woodward and Bernstein. <laughs> I want to be Ben Bradley. I wanted to run the whole paper. And, and then later, I got into managing uh, political campaigns and then started my own public relations agency. And so, you know, there's plenty of uh, things going on in terms of public relations and politics right now, particularly as presidential races get heated up. We, there have been a couple of things recently, and I thought maybe I could get you to weigh in on them sure. as an expert sure. on PR. Um, Rand Paul, of course, we've seen a couple of instances where he walked away from the from a Guardian interview and he got into a bit of a tiff with Savannah Guthrie. Uh, what, what do you make of and what, what would your advice be if he were to call you after those things happen? Well, he made a terrible mistake. I mean, they're going to call Rand Paul rude Paul. You can't <laughs> treat reporters that way. And he, I think, really went into that very unprepared Television is a, is a short medium. He was trying to give 45 second, one minute answers to things that should have been 15 seconds. What advice would I give him now? I tell him he needs to be better prepared when he does television interviews. Oh, right. put him put him in in, in a room with another female and have him make just him, make him practice uh, politeness as well as short answers. Excellent. And what about um, Hillary Clinton, for example? She's run into some trouble with uh, with her email uh, system, as it were. What would you What do you think she did wrong there or right? And what would you say? The emails are complicated matter, but I don't think people are going to judge her based upon whether she hid emails or, or, or put them all out to the public. People judge presidents by how they stand on the economy, on jobs, on health care issues. So I don't think this is going to be a defining moment, although it may be a controversy in her election bid. Well, there, there's also still continues to be talk about Benghazi. I mean, that's something that we are, we're now seeing Republican candidates come back to. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that something that she should be concerned about? Do you think that that holds more sway than something like the email situation? I think Benghazi also kind of has gotten blown out of proportion by her opponents. I think the email is something they were able to grab onto. It was a low-hanging fruit that they could use to hit her over the head with. Mm -hmm. Her biggest problem is it's very tough to be the leader two years out from a presidential campaign and to hold that leadership position. I think most candidates would always be the, rather be the underdog and work their way up to being the leader. And that's her toughest uh, task is uh, actually overcoming being the leader this far out. Wow, that's a that's not a bad place to be, I would imagine. <laughs> not a bad place to be. Uh, now you're working on some issues now. Tell us about some of some of your current clients and current issues you're dealing with. One of the things that's very exciting is we helped the city of San Bruno win the largest fine penalty in history against Pacific Gas and Electric Company for having blown up their city in 2010 in natural gas pipeline explosion due to the, the gross negligence, criminal negligence of PG&E. Uh, that was very exciting. Uh, we've been working for Chevron and exposing the fraud in Ecuador uh, against the, an attorney, Stephen Donziger, Amazon Watch, which is a local a, a allegedly environmental group that was a shill for this uh, fraud against Chevron. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think uh, also very excitingly, we're helping San Francisco parents, teachers, and students uh, oppose the archbishop here in, in San Francisco for his uh, inhumane actions toward, uh, toward teachers, students, and, uh, and alums. And now what's happening there? I read, I read that there was, there was an open letter, uh, very powerful. Um, has there been a reaction from, from the leaders of the Catholic Church? The, the Archbishop is trying to fight back, but he's trying to fight back against uh, literally every Irish Italian immigrant to San Francisco. He's fighting against not just the, the liberal wing of the, uh, of the political spectrum, but he's fighting against the moderates and conservatives within the Catholic Church who are here in the Bay Area who want to see someone who appreciates equality, 
who doesn't ban altar girls at schools, uh, who is more supportive of an open and humane point of view toward diversity. Right on. Well, thanks again for being here. We really Thank appreciate you. it. After the break, we'll be back with more Bay Sunday.